Hey guys, just wanted to talk to you real quick before this like video like starts starts. Um, we are aware that there is a huge global phenomenon happening and that it is very serious. Um, we are practicing social distancing and we hope that you are as well. And we just wanted to wish you the best wishes and that you're keeping safe during all of this. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks for choosing to spend your time with us. <laughs> Anyways. Um, stay safe, wash your hands, treat your neighbors as you want to be treated, and let's, let's look at this project. Hi, welcome back. I'm sitting in a chair now. I made a table. Okay, real talk. I had so many issues building this table. Part of it was due to the fact that I'm using scraps, and just the nature of scraps is they're really great to work with until they're not. And the other part is just that I was rushing different parts of the process because I was just excited to be at the shop, and then different things ended up not being as great as they were supposed to be, and then I had to go back and redo things and redoing things. It's just the worst, and it just made me very upset. But I mean, I really like the final product. And, um, yeah, every single stage of me building this, I did something wrong. So, if you're looking for something to figure out, man, how do I not go wrong? This is it! I gotta tell you, I made lots of mistakes, and I do not want you to make the mistakes that I made, because, man, I felt so dumb. I don't want you to feel dumb. You're smart, you're loyal, and you're beautiful. Let's get into this build. A good place to start? would be to cut out a lid. So here you can see me use the table saw to trim down this piece of plywood that will turn into my lid. I reset the table saw so I could slim down these two pieces of plywood so that they could be the front, back, and sides to the table. Then I hopped over to the miter saw and I cut down the boards I just slimmed to their respective lengths. Then I reset the stopper at the end of the miter saw so I could take these pieces of poplar and cut them down so that they could serve to be the legs. I highly recommend using poplar legs for any of your projects because it's such a strong material. Shelf, oh yeah, shelf, that's shelf, the shelf. shelf. We're cutting shelf, the shelf, shelf now. Woohoo! That's going to be the shelf, bottom part of the shelf, table. Shelf, wow, wow, shelf, wow, shelf, wow. Shelf. Hey, what's going on guys? Just giving you an update as I'm doing this. Um, I'm about to use the, what is it called? I always call it something different, but it's the... Oh, it's the drill press. Duh, I'm about to use the drill press. And I'm going to, uh, that's not square. I'll have to redraw this. <laughs> but I drew a little rectangle for where the outlet is going to be. It's going to be on the side. Um, I took down the legs so it's harder to see the assembled-ish table here that I'm constructing. I've modified my design. Instead of this being the drawer pull that like pulls away from like the front face, uh, these are just going to be a unit. Oh, that was probably loud. I'm so sorry. But it's going to be a unit. This is going to be a big drawer. You just, this is the handle. You just, bzz, you got a drawer. Um, I sanded down the legs. I also chopped them down just a little bit to make sure they were equal length because I had a sneaking suspicion that they were not. And that was proven right when I lined them all up. They were off by like an eighth of an inch, which like isn't all that much, but it's enough to give you a wobbly table. And we don't want a wobbly table. So, yeah, the uh, fanboy's going, you can probably hear it, because I'm actively doing woodworking things and there's lots of dust particles. So let's get back to the building. Whenever I use the drill press, I always put a clamp onto the board that I'm about to drill because I just do not trust my hands to hold it still. But also, my arm is in the way so you can't even see what I'm doing, so I'll just tell you. I am using the drill press to give me a starting point so whenever I use the saw I can actually like start in the middle of the board instead of at the ends. I have used the jigsaw probably two times before I filmed myself doing this. 
Now it has been a minute since I've used it and I'm also just not great at using the jigsaw. I couldn't get the angles right, I put the clamps in a weird way so I couldn't even use my second starter hole and I was just getting increasingly frustrated. I actually went and finished this off camera because I was so mad at myself for how I was doing. Wow, look at that. The magic of doing it off camera made it perfect. I'm using L-shaped brackets to attach the sides to the legs for this project. Normally, I go for a pocket screw, but I was super afraid that the material I was using was just too thin to hold a pocket screw. So I went with some uh, really small brackets and really short screws. I'm actually taking out screws because the first screws that I used, the heads were too small and it left the brackets being shaky, which is um, not what I wanted. So I had to find some different screws, but um, it worked great. I totally recommend L brackets. The next step of the plan is to install the shelf support beams. That is if I can get the clamp into the right position. I don't know why that was so hard. The beams are made out of oak because it's super strong and that's really it actually. Dude, I'm filming. Oh, I did not know that. I used pocket screws to secure everything. I was having some issues for some reason with these screws, so I got some help. I use more L brackets to attach the drawer support beams. This center beam is what the drawer hardware is going to attach to. Now I'm using pocket screws to hold it in place, but I had literally so much trouble getting it to be level. I really, well, I was about to say I don't know why, but I, I actually do. The, um, the actual board in the middle is about 1 16th of an inch too small, so I had to use this clamp to clamp it in, but I was re really relying on the pocket screws to do the rest of it for me. So keeping it level while I was attaching it was very difficult, but I eventually accomplished it. It's drawer time! I found these really cool strips of wood that are really thin that I used to make the drawer. Um, I made them three inches wide which is really small, but I mean like, what am I gonna put in my drawer? Like nothing crazy. Uh, I cut them down to 11 and 12 inches long respectively. Then I did a glue up. I have never done a glue up before. Um, as probably evidenced by this video, it went poorly at best. A lot of that is probably due to the fact that I not have a long workstation because we have a bunch of different projects going on in the garage at a time. But it was just a mess. From start to finish, it was so bad. I couldn't get the pieces to line up correctly from what I just glued together and it just made everything so difficult. I remember just cringing at how this all turned out. And a lot of it has to do with how I clamped it. I clamped it weird and it caused the, uh, the shorter pieces to be bent in. And that ended up being a really big problem later. The drawer being the way that it is sucks. <laughs> I did what I could to fix it with the belt sander. But man, the messed up drawer was the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, the drawer, first of all, it's just a little bit too big by probably an eighth of an inch. So when I close the drawer, it touches the 5 volt power supply plug. So that's not great. But I shouldn't be slamming any drawers, so it's fine. That'll be okay. But then, the face is bent is bent like this it's mm, mm, i don't know it's it's not it's not straight so putting on the face plate was ridiculous and it's not straight and i can see it i can see it with my eyeballs and it's going to bother me for the duration that i have this table <laughs> oh my gosh please just do it right the first time this is so stupid and i'm so mad at myself because i couldn't I couldn't take off all the material to make it completely straight, otherwise I might as well just put another board there because it would have just been too thin to hold anything. So, ugh! Building things is hard when you don't plan well enough in advance. 
we've returned to the shelf. Now I'm putting a pilot hole into this um, into the support beam because I don't want to split the wood. I'm going into oak, which is a super hard wood, and I just I don't want to break anything. Now I'm using this trick. I'm using masking tape to mark how deep the support beam is, so I don't accidentally go through it. Uh, this is a trick that I use on just about anything, and I mean steal it. Use it for your own projects. It, I'm proving right now that it works. I'm not splitting the wood with my screws, which is fantastic. We love not splitting the screws. But um, I'm doing three screws per side, so six screws total. And once they're in, we've got a shelf. I'm so excited. Now I'm drilling a hole for the power cable to the outlets so it can, you know, escape as it's supposed to. Now I'm attaching the outlet box for the outside. I'm just using um, half inch screws for this and then I repeat the process for the one that goes on the inside. So now I finally get to attach the lid to the legs. I put pocket screw holes into each of the legs before I assembled everything as you see. But I made a crucial mistake so I had to take all of them out because I forgot to install the drawer hardware because I left it on the drawer. So I had to take it off the drawer and then put it onto the place where it's supposed to be and then attach everything. So ugh, just plan ahead better my friends. This is so annoying. Finally, everything is together like it is supposed to be. So it's time to paint. I decided to go with white paint because one, we had it on hand, and two, it's a really great neutral color that should match most things, and three, I'm using a bunch of different types of woods in this project, so if I decided to go with a stain, I don't think it would turn out as great as I would like it to. So white paint it is. I did two coats before I flipped everything over, and once it was dry, well, I mean, I, I flipped it over. Uh, I sanded off any part, any like drippies that got down and are just annoying. But um, I did something really bad. I painted against the grain, which you are absolutely not supposed to do. I was just way too excited to be there and way too excited to paint to notice what I was doing. Like I did not notice until it was completely dry and there's nothing I could do about it. But it's okay. It's honestly not the worst thing I could have done. And the paint looks really nice. There wasn't enough space in the shop for me to paint because there's so many other projects going on. So I moved out into the other part of the garage where there's no tools and usually cars. I decided on this really cute blue color because one, we had it. And two, I really liked it. And who's gonna see the drawer unless I open it? So a lot of the driving force for how I designed this table was I wanted to have this as my handle. Because one, I didn't want to have to go out and buy hardware because lots of places are closed and also I don't want to go outside. So I took what I had and I cut this in a very precise way to get the maximum amount of color out of it because I wanted it to be colorful and cool. And then I painted over the paint that was there. That wasn't the plan. The plan was to keep the original colors as they were, so that like maybe in the future I can use this as maybe not a bedside table, but maybe like not a coffee table, but like more like like a side table for like sofas, so that the coffee table that I already made would match this. Because this is the piece that I cut off to make my table able to flip around. It's super great, and if you've not watched this video, click the corner, one of them, it's, it's, it's this one or it's this one, it's uh, any, any man's game, or any man's guess. But anyways, watch that video after this one if you want to know what I'm talking about. But I, I ended up painting over it because I already used all the paints that we used to make those panels, so I was fresh out of luck and everything was chipped and it looked dirty and it looked bad, so I said, I have new paints, I can paint it. And then I did. So, I've been editing, and it turns out I forgot to record most of the electronic parts, and the parts that I did 
are ruined because I stepped in front of the camera. So I'm literally so upset because you don't get to see the coolest part of this project. It took me so long. This took like the bulk of my time and you can't see it. So I'm going to verbally walk you through it. I'm going to throw pictures up so you can see because I'm so mad. This is so, oh, this is so annoying. I have two outlets. I, um, I connected them in parallel. So no fires are started, no fires anywhere. No, 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 we don't, we don't do fires here. Uh, I took a five volt power supply box and I plugged it into the inside because that's pretty much all it's going to drive. I might add something later, like I might add like an inverted charger into the, the surface, but like that would be, that would happen way later when I have money and there's not a lot of stuff prevents me from going outside. So, I took the 5 volt charger. It was it used to be a cell phone charger and I took it and now it is a, uh, a cool light charger. And I connected the um, positive wire and I extended it with another wire and I ran it up to a limit switch. Now a limit switch or um, as most people know it is a refrigerator switch. When you open your refrigerator, the lights turn on. That's a limit switch. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So I ran a lead to one terminal on the limit switch and then I had a different lead to a different terminal that made sure that it would, the whole thing would turn on once the, um, the drawer was opened and the leads went back down. And I attached an LED. Well, first I put a, a resistor and then I put an LED and I connected six LEDs in parallel. That means that there's enough power that will go to each of them. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's just a short and sweet. If they were all in series, then you would not have any lights. So, um, it looks a little bit like a mess. That's just because that's kind of how I operate. It's a, it's a really simple circuit, but I didn't need anything exuberant for this project. I just kind of like went with what I had and just ran with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I am so mad that I do not have footage of this stuff. This is, ugh, ugh. I'm sorry. So I went through my camera roll on my phone and I found some Snapchats that I sent to some of my friends while I was like building this. And uh, here was part of my setup when I tinned the tips of the um, the heavy he heavier voltage carrying wires. Um, the setup looks different later. It looks kind of like this. I put the solder station on top of the whole table so I could like see and know what I was doing and it worked really great and it would have been awesome on camera except that I stood in front of it. Uh... Okay, so I finished um, wiring everything. So here it is, I know it's dark. Um, all the cables are managed, everything's cool. Now what I'm simulating right now with my hand here on the switch is the drawer being closed. Now obviously the drawer is open because I was just installing all these lights, but to show you what I'm doing, here it is when the drawer opens. So now you have seen how I made this table. It's a lovely table, it's beautiful, and it's great. But is it the best table that has ever been constructed? Now let me tell you what an impossible standard to hold anything to the best possible ever made. Because, oh my goodness, how could you possibly make it anything like that? Now, with that being said, yes, it is the best table that has ever been made. And if anybody has another opinion on that, mm, that's too bad because you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I would do differently if I were to make this table again. Uh, for one thing, I would make the drawer probably one inch shorter uh, lengthwise just so that that way my tolerances aren't as tight as they are right now. Um, I would trim this little faceplate a little bit because it's really tight fitting into the space provided. If I could, I'd do it not out of scraps just because scraps are great until they're not great and you gotta fight the material that you're using because it's like, well, it's this or nothing, so we gotta make it work. It's a great table. I'm super excited to move it into my apartment. 
I'm super excited to use it. It's going to be a great table and I'm going to use it hopefully for many years to come. I love it. <laughs> I really like that you can just open the drawer and like lights turn on. I just, I love that. That is such a fun thing. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and thank you specifically to our patrons. It's because of you guys we get to make cool stuff like this. Um, if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that bell down below so you don't miss an upload. Anyways, um, see you next time.